bipartisan proposals to legalize sports betting in Minnesota have been floating around the legislature the last few years, but none have yet crossed the finish line. Senator Jeremy Miller has a proposal that he believes could garner bipartisan support, and he joins me now in the studio. Welcome. Hi, Shannon. Thanks for having me. Previous efforts to legalize sports betting in the Senate were led by two lawmakers who are no longer here. We had Senator Roger Chamberlain and Senator Carla Bigham, one Republican, one DFLer. What prompted you to put on the so-called sports betting mantle? So uh, Senator Chamberlain and, and Senator Bigham both did a great job of uh, promoting uh, sports betting in the Senate. Uh, what folks may not know is I've long been a, a big advocate for legalizing uh, sports betting here in Minnesota, and I was very involved with that process, although it just be uh, behind the scenes. Okay. For those who haven't been following the issue, it's important to note that all of Minnesota's neighboring states have legalized sports wagering. Canada also does. In your view, what is holding up the efforts here in Minnesota? So I think it's been a, a lack of communication between the stakeholders, and that's why I'm proposing the, the Minnesota Sports Betting Act to bring all the stakeholders together. And the proposal that I'm putting forward, uh, it's good for the tribes, it's good for the horse racing tracks, it's good for Minnesota's professional sports teams, and most importantly, it's good for the Minnesotans who want to bet on sports by giving them plenty of access and plenty of opportunities to do so. So the holdup has been finding a formula that makes all of the stakeholders feel like they're getting what they want. Yeah, and, and based on what I'm hearing from folks, not only in the district that I represent, but all across the state of Minnesota, uh, there's a huge appetite to legalize sports betting here in Minnesota. And with that big appetite, there's going to be plenty to go around for everyone. I, I think there's enough for all of the stakeholders to get a piece of the action. Well, so let's break it down because it's, it's sort of complex, but not once you kind of understand it. Your plan would allow the tribes and the two horse racing tracks and each professional sports team to offer on-site sports betting. So, for example, if you were at a casino playing blackjack or if you were at the horse races, you know, betting on the ponies, while the Vikings were playing, you could also bet on the Vikings while you were at on-site. Is that right? That's correct. Uh, basically, it would allow the tribes, the horse racing tracks, and the professional sports teams to have an on-site sports book where they can bet on sports, whether it's the Minnesota Vikings or uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. It doesn't have to be a, a local sports team. It could be a baseball game or a hockey game or a basketball game and so on. And is it just like U.S. sports or can you also bet on like international sports, like if you're a huge fan of Manchester Football Club? Uh, well, it would be up to the vendor and, and the, the tribe, the track, and uh, the sports team, but you would be able to, to uh, bet on those matches as well. So your plan would also allow mobile licenses, which I think are what a lot of people are interested in because they don't necessarily want to go on site. They want to just have their phone, and that's where all the growth has been. Um, people can place bets wherever they are. So. What does that piece look like? What does the mobile piece look like? So you're absolutely right. The, the biggest demand for sports betting is mobile or online betting. And what you've seen in, in other states that have legalized sports betting is uh, the demand is on the mobile device or on the online device. That's where most of the bets take place. So under the proposal that I'm putting forward, it would allow each of the tribes to offer mobile betting and then it would also allow those tribes to enter into a strategic partnership with a professional sports team or a horse racing track to just provide more access to people. For example, there might be folks who are interested in watching professional sports but may not be interested in um, going to a casino and, and playing slots, slot machines. So it would give access to more people for the tribes if they ended up partnering with a professional sports team or with the horse racing track. And then it also would give the horse racing track or professional sports team a little piece of that mobile action. So then would they split some of the money that's earned because it's a partnership? Yes, and that will not be described in the legislation. The legislation simply allows them to enter into a partnership and then the details of that partnership would be worked out between the stakeholders, so between the tribe and either the horse racing track or the sports team. And that's why I think uh, this type of legislation or something very similar 
could get the bipartisan support needed to pass the legislature this year because it brings all the stakeholders together, encourages them to work together, and ultimately has a great product for the people of Minnesota who want to bet on sports. Now, I remember with the proposal that Senator Chamberlain had last year, it would have required somebody to go to the brick and mortar to set up the mobile account. Is that still a part of this, or is this, is, how is, is this different? That's yet to be determined. My preference is they would not have to go on site, um, but that was part of the proposal last year. And again, that's why it's important to bring all the stakeholders together, get them around a table, and let's talk through these uh, details and put forward the best plan that can get bipartisan support but results in the best opportunity for Minnesotans to bet on sports here in Minnesota legally. So the other question I have is about the mobile device because there are some big apps out there. There's FanDuel and DraftKings. Are the tribes then partnering with the app? Are they developing their own app? Or, or how does that piece work with the online gambling, the mobile gambling? Yeah, they would very likely partner with an already established vendor like DraftKings or FanDuel or BetMGM. You can go right down the list, but there are larger vendors that already offer sports betting, and uh, it is most likely that whoever has mobile sports betting would partner with one of those established vendors. And finally, the last piece we need to talk about is that you propose for temporary licenses to be available for on-site betting when major sports events come to the state. Like if we were to get the Super Bowl again, or a PGA tournament, or the Final Four, or like something that's bringing people from all over into our state, you would like a temporary license for on-site betting for those particular events. And why is that? Because it really helps enhance the fan experience. If, if we're lucky enough to get a Super Bowl or we have uh, PGA Tour events that come to Minnesota, it just helps the fans get more engaged in what's going on in, in the live event. And that's why I think it's important to provide a temporary license for on-site sports betting when those major events do come to the state of Minnesota. There's a lot of numbers that get thrown around about how much other states are earning from their legalized sports betting. Uh, in your proposal, you're suggesting that the revenue that comes in is divided according to this formula. One quarter tax relief for charities, one quarter for mental health and problem gambling, a quarter for major sporting events, and a quarter for grants to support youth sports. And so can you break that down? For example, tax relief for charities, major sporting events, how would that money be funneled exactly? Sure, so a quarter of the revenue that came into the state would go to charities for tax relief for charitable gambling. So charities already offer uh, charitable gambling. They're taxed at a high rate, too high of a rate in my opinion. So I think we should provide our charities some relief so they can get more money out in their communities. Uh, problem gambling or mental health is another one that uh, is an issue that we want to make sure that we provide some funding for. Youth sports, uh, it's important. If people are going to be betting on sports, I think uh, a portion of those proceeds uh, that come into the state should go uh, to help promote uh, youth sports. And finally, uh, major sporting events. So what we see is, you'll see Indianapolis, for example, they get a lot of major sporting events. Georgia gets a lot of major sporting events. Well, those states have a fund established to help bring in those major sporting events. And I'd like to do the same thing here in Minnesota so we can compete for more Super Bowls, more Final Fours, Big Ten championships, Olympic events, those types of things to bring those big events to Minnesota so the state of Minnesota can benefit from them. Senator Jeremy Miller, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me.